I feel like I should be making a banana joke at some point in this video. We'll see how that goes. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. What an intro. Uh, I'm putting monkey parts on the Grom. Um, the monkey rear sets, it's the same engine, same whatever. Um, but they kind of bolt on, which I'm actually really excited about. So biggest chunk of silver left on this bike is the OEM. I hesitate to call them rear sets because they're not really in the rear as peg holders side plates I believe is what's uh, on the Honda OEM part manual whatever anyways replacing this big old chunk of silver because I will never have a passenger on here and I'm trying to get rid of the silver and we're going black black and gold so um, the monkey plates uh, actually are basically bolt on uh, there's a few things we have to change around a few parts that you have to buy it's a little bit narrower um, Gonna be changing out the shifter in the process. And yeah, as always, there'll be a part list down below in the description. Um, it's gonna be a fairly, fairly long process, but not necessarily a difficult process. So stick with me. Let's get these swapped out. We're gonna start on the other side, actually. It's Future Spencer. Let's talk about the tools we're gonna use today. Uh, rubber mallet, get that axle out. Um, couple of pairs of pliers for getting some of the oh I can't cotter pins get saving some of the cotter pins out um, circlet pliers a 19 and a 14 for the axle a 12 a 10 and an 8 for other things a little tube of Loctite and a flat-headed screwdriver just for general prying which sounds scary um, I would also add <laughs> One word of caution for what you're about to see. Um, some of the stuff on the right hand side that I do on the bike, don't do it the way I did it. Um, how I would recommend doing it is undoing the circlip on the back of the brake pedal and then taking uh, that side panel off. Um, it'll save you a lot of headache with the brake master cylinder uh, at the start and at the end as well. So. You've been warned, prepare to watch me be frustrated for a little bit. Yeah. Okay, let's get going on this. So, on this side, we have our plate. We're gonna have to transfer our foot peg over. Not a huge deal. Um, I did have to buy the monkey brake lever. Uh, it's shaped a little bit differently, bring it a little bit further out, I believe. Yeah, it just sits a hair further out. So that's one part you gotta swap. Um, I bought the swing arm axle bolt. Um, it is a few millimeters, half an inch, I don't know, shorter than the stock Grom one. Um, you can use washers in behind to space out the peg and reuse existing stuff, but I figured, well, we're in here, might as well do it right with a $8 axle or whatever. Um, gonna have to unbolt the master cylinder back here uh, as well as get the brake light switch off and a couple springs but that should all be pretty easy stuff so to start we're gonna get this uh, of course it's spinning on me already neat off to a great start here <laughs> okay. straighten out this cotter clip on the back cotter clip cotter pin Um, if you're careful, you can reuse these a couple times. They do get weak as they're bending. Uh, or you can buy, when you're buying all your other parts, you should throw a couple in on the parts bag. They're pennies a piece, so you might as well. Um, I have a big old box of them I think I got from Harbor Freight or something like that, so I never, I never throw those in, but I would recommend it. Especially so you can be a little bit more aggressive when you take it out. Oh, there we go. Don't lose that little washer. Okay, with that out, you can slide your pivot out. And I usually put that back in just so I don't forget how the spring went. Which, you'd like to know how the spring goes. That's your, your view there. 
Cool. From there, um, I think it might be easier if I give myself a little bit of working space on this. Uh, I actually have a wrench on the other side jammed against the foot peg over there. Otherwise, it's just going to keep spinning on you. Uh, this is a 19, by the way, and I think it's a 14 on the other side. And then a 12 down below on this guy. Once I have this off, my priorities are going to be getting the master, master cylinder off, which should be an 8 and getting the uh, brake switch on the back off, which I don't even know if that's uh, Yeah, we're going to have to get that off before we do this. Okay. So there's a smaller spring and a bigger spring in behind here. I don't know if I'm even going to be able to zoom in on that small spring. Okay, bigger spring out front. There's a smaller spring in behind. I want to get that smaller spring off, hopefully. Okay, that is the one that is going to our brake switch. This is what turns your brake light on and off as you're going. And with that loosened, should be able to just slide it up and then slide it out and then just so I don't lose that spring anywhere eh, it'll be fine for now okay they're good there and then like I said there's a couple eight millimeter bolts on this master cylinder that we can take off I probably should have done this before I undid the side plate itself that's all right man started Whoa. note to future self maybe skip me struggling with this shit <laughs> yeah definitely keep your side plate mounted while you loosen these at least there we go god honda i have to assume those were loctite or something because that was not normal torque specs Before I go too far, I'm also going to undo, ooh, carefully undo, um, and bait the best way to do that top bolt, not bolt, spring, top spring. Okay, brake spring out, good. do it the way I'm doing it. Keep this bolted on until you have everything undone. Jesus. It is so much more difficult than it had to be. Uh, again, y'all, learn from my mistakes. Do this before <laughs> you take it off. So there's a cotter pin in the back. pin on the bottom of the master cylinder arm holding it to the brake lever itself. took us to get back together, but that's all right. I'll show you all what I mean here in a second. Assuming I can get it. There we go. Ho, ho, ho. Okay. 
We're just gonna do this from the ground because I'm already here. Okay, you have the back of your brake lever. This pin came in from the back side out and then attaches it to this clevis at the bottom of your master cylinder. You need to undo those. I would recommend, again, not doing it how I did it and leaving everything tight as far as the uh, swing arm pivot and the uh, bottom stay and do that after. Undo those after. Oh, hi, Raleigh. Hi, what's that pepper? I'm really thanking my past self for buying some of these small parts, so like this washer and this circlip, because that means I don't have to actually take this apart. Um, you could reuse them. I originally bought the extra circlip because those like to go flying, um, but for right now, like, yeah, I'm all about that life. Okay, so brake arm, washer. Put the circlip on there. Nice and good. Probably throw a little grease in there. Let's see where it are. Press a little bit. There we go. And then that washer will go there. Oh, I should have grabbed my cotter pins. Oh, magic. I have my cotter pins now. That's just gonna sit in place for now. I'll come back and trim that up. It's a little long, but diameter's right. Cool, and then spring. Can you get transferred over? There. Sweet, and then let's start reassembling that piece with the brake. That'll need to come in from the back and be super fun, but we'll do that uh, now. the time being, pop that on there. That thread it in a little bit. That can go bye bye. Okay, let's see what we can do. Theme of today's episode, don't do what I did. <laughs> I ended up assembling this contraption um, to the brake pedal and undid the circle up, take the brake pedal off. Well, I guess I haven't put it back on yet, so I can show you. Did it this way, and now I am reassembling that circlip on there because in my mind, I have decided that is now easier than uh, putting the, uh, putting that stupid washer thing back up on there. That thing is a pain, so. Okay, and now, should just have to put this guy back on and hope that it doesn't shoot somewhere. I hate circlips. Uh, I feel like this episode is just going to be one giant um, 
to use a Reddit term, I am not a lawyer. <laughs> I am not a mechanic. Um, I am figuring this one especially out as I go, as you can probably tell. Oh my god, Sir Clips. I did it. I did it, guys. Hallelujah. Okay, so we are going to feed that uh, brake light spring back through. And get that reattached as well. <laughs> I'm not going to make you watch me suffer anymore this episode. There's enough of that. Okay. Everything on this side is back together. Woohoo! Um, I don't have this nut on because we're going to slide that axle out of there. Um, the brakes are all back on. Uh, insert torque value for those bolts here, as well as, don't forget, Loctite. I'm sure from the factory the Honda says one-time use. But uh, you probably know how I feel about that. Um, one thing I want to point out that I messed up on. Oh, sorry for making you nauseous. Is right here is your brake light switch, and the one on the monkey is a right angle. Um, if you use your Grom one, you're running into the back of a post. Running into something. Might actually just be this bit of plastic. So I think you have two options. You can either cut a little bit of this plastic cover off, or you can swap it out for the right angle monkey piece. I'm going to look and see how much it is before I make a decide and cut this plastic, but, um, Keep that in mind, and then make sure you have to adjust, or make sure you adjust your brake light switch so that when you pull down on the brake, your brake light actually comes on. And that'd be this little switch here. Yes, and it should be pretty narrow range in there where it actually comes on or not. So make sure you're doing that correctly. Okay, this part. Oh, hello. Hi. This part's going to get, um, fun. So what I want to do, uh, is basically replace the axle that's in there now with this axle that I bought. Um, and give it just a little bit of lube. Help it on its journey through there. And I have it, um, Still connected and still in there, but basically gonna use one to replace the other as it goes through. So that in theory, I don't have to realign anything. It should just, keyword should, just stay lined up. Oh yeah, with a little uh, persuasion and jimmying, that uh, got the old axle out. Woohoo! Um, so now I'm gonna take off this side plate. Um, the only difference over here, aside from not having brakes to deal with, is I need to release the shift shaft uh, or shift arm off of the shift shaft. So there's one bolt, a little pinch bolt that's holding that on. Um, so I'll remove that bolt entirely. If it's seeming tight, I'll use a little bit of a flathead to pry that open a little bit. And then it should be one bolt here. Pull it off. I'm not going to make you watch this. This is probably going to be long enough as it is. Yay. We're, we're done. Yay. Oh yeah, I'm going to get on the ground for this, I guess. Uh, the man in the box shifter right here is in. Has a nice little spring tip. Um, and goes directly on the shift shaft instead of the stock one that has those little, I think they're rose joints in there. That just leads to a little bit of slop, so that was a really easy and cheap add-on to do while we were in there. Um, let's get some 
So I d since I re or since I bought the monkey's axle, so saying monkey on everything sounds funny. Since I bought the monkey axle, I didn't have to space out on this side or the other side. It is just in there, good to go, which is exciting. Um, some of the weird things. Uh, apparently, I need to switch out the spring because the indent for it is on the wrong side on this side, but it was fine on the. I don't know. It was fine on the other one. So that's getting added to my next order as well as that brake switch on the other side. I, don't know, I think uh, removing the passenger pegs and just getting rid of that little bit of silver on there really cleans things up in my opinion. I think that looks great. And I probably saved, I don't know, half a pound getting rid of this extra bulk off of each one. So this is probably the same video for y'all, but for me, it is very different uh, because I've been gone on vacation for the last 10, uh, went on vacation for about five days, but it's been about 10 days since I filmed the first half of this. Um, since then, ordered in some parts and got them in. And I'm excited because I fixed that spring on the foot peg, that was an easy fix, just for some reason on the monkey, it uses the same spring on both sides, but on the Grom, it's a different spring and whatever, ordered the right one. Uh, ordered that right angle brake adapter and surprise, it doesn't actually fix my problem. So that's fun. Um, part number on the spring was the same. So I don't think that was the issue. I think it's just clearance with that piece in there. So, uh, what I'm gonna do, and also ignore all of what I said in the last, I'll put warnings on the screen, I'm sure, but uh, you don't need that right angle break piece. You can make it work with the stock round one. Um, what I'm gonna do is just cut a little bit of this stock body panel. Um, we should just need to trim a little bit right here on the bottom. Uh, I'll probably do it with like a Dremel cutoff wheel and then sand it afterwards to make it look pretty, but we'll see. Part is all trimmed up. So I took off from about here to about here. And that was, oh man, focus from about here to about here. And that was all that was needed. I didn't even use the Dremel. I used tin snips and a file, uh, but it looks pretty clean. I am out here wrapping up two videos today. I uh, just finished doing the sound comparison between the exhaust, which if you're curious, I actually don't know if that's out yet, if I can link it or not yet. But when it is out, I'll put it here, here. I still haven't learned which side's which. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the monkey pegs, I think look great. That black on black on black on black on gold <laughs> is really starting to pop. And I think with the high mount exhaust, it kind of gives it a cool vibe. Uh, I do have some more parts on order. Um, let's see, I have one of the two front fork stanchions from a monkey that might give it kind of a cool vibe and I can ditch that front fender. And then I just ordered a beak, which will be the, the OEM Honda one. I think that'll look cool with just the, the fork protectors. And then, oh, since I put on that uh, new shifter arm, neutral is extremely hard to find. Uh, and Study Garage just got back into stock the Chimera shift shaft supports that's supposed to help with that. So I have one of those on the way too. And fingers crossed that works because that'll solve a lot of headaches. Ooh, the sun's that way, I should not be that way. Well, now I'm squinting. Okay, anyways, it's almost dinner time. I'm gonna go see the wife and the dog. Uh, thanks for watching. Sorry, these were all kind of out of order and out of timeline sequence and whatever, but hopefully it was good info. And if you have questions, drop them below. Uh, thank you if you're a subscriber. If you're not, you should probably be. Uh, put out a good amount of Grom content and I don't know. If you watch this one, you might like the other ones. Who knows? We'll see. Anyways, 
I'll see y'all later.